Hey there, welcome. Welcome to Rise and Receive. This is an opportunity in your day to stop whatever you're doing and take a little bit of time to explore how to receive fulfillment in your life by unlearning struggle. So today's Rise and Receive is tip number two on releasing the resistance that blocks what you want. So I've started recently a new series on resistance and you may have heard the saying, what you resist persists. Well, we're gonna be unpacking all of these different ways that we create resistance, experience resistance, and how it blocks the flow to the very things that you want in your life. So I'll be giving you a tip to release resistance each time during the series and you can experiment with that and see what happens in your life. So I invite you as we enter into tip number two today to think about something that you want in your life that perhaps <clears throat> you are feeling doubtful about whether you can have it. Okay, because this is a very common way that we start to experience resistance or experience a slowness or a stopping of the flow of what we want when self-doubt comes in. And this points to the tip that I'm gonna to illuminate today, which is a very common form of resistance, but a lot of people don't know about it. So when you feel doubt, many people hear the phrase, just think positive, just stay positive. And sometimes this works, but sometimes it actually creates the very resistance you're trying to dissolve by thinking positive and staying positive. So just sit with that for a moment um, and receive today's message and see how this lands for you. If you don't know me, my name is Sonia Miller. I'm a speaker, coach, and best-selling author, and I mentor ambitious, goal-oriented people to surpass their limits with ease and speed. And the way that I do this is I love to illuminate people's blind spots. So blind spots are when you cannot see something that you need to see. In other words, you are missing an essential insight. Just like when you're driving a car and you have a blind spot and there's something that you need to see that you cannot see. So I do this in the realm of surpassing your limits because the, the foundation on which we stand and everything that I teach and live by and coach about is this, your consciousness creates your reality. And what happens is that ambitious goal-oriented people tend to have blind spots that are very unique to that type of personality, and I'm one of them. <laughs> and so what happens is ambitious goal-oriented people tend to over-rely on the doing skills that allow them to be very successful, but those same skills can actually sabotage and undermine your efforts and be the cause of your upper limit when you don't have another very essential skill, which is what I teach, which is the skill of receiving. And that skill is based in the being model of power, whereas ambitious goal-oriented people tend to rely and over-rely on the doing model of power. And therein is your upper limit. So we're gonna be illuminating something that occurs in consciousness because once you see clearly how you create resistance, and shift that and gain the essential insight, then all sorts of things can come into your life that you can receive that you weren't able to receive before. Okay, so with that, the resistance that we're talking about is this age old you know, bit of cheerleading or support that we'll hear when we're feeling doubtful or discouraged or or even hopeless about something that we, we really want. And somebody who's very well-meaning will say, just think positive, just stay positive. Well, that doesn't always work. So here's, how, here's what's happening in consciousness. Consciousness creates your reality, but what a lot of people don't understand is that your reality isn't just what you're thinking about but what's happening in consciousness is much more about how you're thinking about what you're thinking about. Now, let's go to the doing and the being models of power, okay? If you're an ambitious goal-oriented people and you tend to rely and over-rely on doing, that means you're recruiting a lot of thinking and action skills. That's what we do well, that's produced results, that's gotten us pretty far. Okay, but if you're missing the being skill or the being lens, okay, then you're going to be missing another set of skills, which has to do with awareness and experiencing. 
So the doing model thinks and takes action. The being model becomes aware and experiences feelings and sensations in the body. The being model of power values presence. What is present in your body? What is present in your awareness? Okay, there's many ways that we explore the power of presence. The doing model values productivity. So what happens is is when you're busy doing, 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 and someone tells you to just think positive if you're feeling discouraged, what are you going to do? You're going to look at that consciousness tool through the lens of doing, which means I need to think positive and I need to do it right. I need to do it right. I need to be focused like the hunter on thinking positive. Meanwhile, you're ignoring all of these sensations in your body And if thinking positive makes you feel bad, which many times it does, because you're not feeling positive, you're actually feeling afraid, you're feeling discouraged, you're feeling hopeless, you're feeling stuck, you don't know what to do, there may be anxiety. If somebody tells you to just think positive and just feel positive, that's going to create resistance in your body. And here's what happens with resistance. Resistance is attention on something you don't want. So you may be thinking about the positive thing or trying to make yourself think about the positive thing, but you're ignoring your awareness, which comes from your beingness on, I don't feel better. I'm having a hard time focusing on this positive thing because your consciousness creates your reality. Your feelings are infinitely more important than what you're focusing on. So it's not what you're focusing on, it's how you're focusing on it. So let's get really concrete. Let's say you are working on manifesting money, okay? Now, sometimes you can think about money and feel good about it, right? But let's say you've been working this plan with you know, a paycheck or a client or a sale. I get this a lot with salespeople, right? And so they've been, you know, in a good space. They've got a lead and people in their funnel and something like that. But then they're not closing the sale. And somebody says, well, just think positive, right? Just stay positive. Have faith, right? Well, if you're not feeling good, if you're trying to talk yourself into feeling differently and it's not working, okay, then that's going to create resistance because you're actually resisting by lack of awareness and lack of legitimization and lack of acknowledgement about how you're really feeling about this, you're resisting fear, doubt, insecurity. What you resist persists. So that resistance that you're ignoring because you're looking over here trying to think positive is actually getting more energy. What you focus upon flourishes. Resistance is a form of focus on the things you don't want. Because when you're pushing against something, it's getting lots of attention. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be doubtful. I don't want to be hopeless. I don't want to feel insecure. I need to do this right. I need to do this affirmation right and just think positive. So thinking positive, when when it helps you feel good, great. Think positive, stay positive. But if you're trying to think positive and stay positive and you're feeling bad or stuck or beating yourself up because you can't stay focused on the positive and you're afraid of your thoughts and you're afraid of your feelings, that's going to block you from the very thing that you want. So is this resonating for you? I'm sure it's resonating for some of you because this is a very, very common form of resistance that is mis understood. It's a form of support and advice that is misunderstood. So what do we do instead? So you start with assessing, okay, let me think positive. Let me just, you know, really put my attention on all that's going right in this sales process. Or it could be love, or it could be your relationship with your body. It could be anything, but whatever it is that you want that you're giving your attention to. If thinking positive is what you need and it feels better, great, run with it. Because if you feel better, now that's attention on the things that feel good and life will give you more of what feels good. But if you feel bad, stop with the affirmation. And then willingness, which is a a type of affirmation that I teach, which is incredibly powerful, can then be uh, um, aligned with how you want to feel. Okay, so... I'm going to give you an affirmation, which is one of my client's favorites. I love this. Okay. And it comes from the Receive Oracle card deck. So 
Here's the Receive Oracle card from the Receive Oracle card deck. You can get that on Amazon. And the card that I chose for today is Be Unselective. Be Unselective. So what does that mean? Well, when you learn how to shift from just being a hunter who's pursuing, and that's what human doings do, to the majestic tree that receives all day long, the majestic tree is unselective about what it receives. It allows life to provide all day long without hunting or thinking or doing, just by being a being, which is what we're talking about here. And what what it practices is being unselective. Now, being unselective about what you receive allows the flow to move through your life. But the hunter and the doing model is very selective. I'll receive what I want. I'll resist what I don't want. The mind is a sorting machine. A hunter focuses on what it wants to the exclusion of all else. That's great when you're in task mode or in hunter mode or project manager mode. But when you are trying to manifest dreams and the things aren't flowing, then you can shift over to being, practice being unselective. So you're focusing to stay with the example on money and you start to feel insecure or doubtful or afraid don't be selective about that. Don't worry. Don't think that this is bad that I'm feeling bad and try to talk yourself out of it with thinking positive. Instead say, ah, I'm, I'm going to receive this. I'm going to receive the fear and I'm going to let it be here so that that can flow on through. And then as I do, I can now focus my attention. Instead of thinking positive, use this affirmation, which is I am willing to be pleasantly surprised. I'm willing to be pleasantly surprised. So the sale hasn't come in yet. I'm feeling afraid. I'm going to let that be here. I'm going to be unselective. I'm going to be aware of my feelings and not sort them out and think that they don't have permission and resist them. I'm going to actually allow them. I'm going to receive them. <sighs> Breathe into that. That's going to give you a lot of relief so that the emotional energy of your experience, your presence can be here. And now focus on what feels good. You know what? Okay, so it isn't going the way that I wanted. I am willing to be pleasantly surprised. If that doesn't work for you, find something that you're truly willing to think, to believe, to experience, to feel. Put your attention on that. Willingness allows you to focus on what feels good and become an invitation for it with little to no resistance because you can always find something that you're willing to focus on that feels good. So I hope this tip was helpful. If you like this, please like, please share. It helps me reach the people that I'm here to serve. If you're on YouTube, click the red, the red subscribe button. It helps me also reach the people that I'm here to serve and I'll notify you of the next time I release a video. And keep coming back for more because next week I'll be focusing on tip number three, continuing the series of releasing the resistance that blocks you from what you want. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye.